Running commentary. We are exploring listening to albums. Soft Cell, the art of falling apart. Hold the phones. Let's talk soft sell for a second. In most cases, what happens when you say to an American about soft sell, oh, tainted love, and that is the extent, the beginning, the end of the knowledge of soft sell. The review of this album is going to be very key. I encourage anybody that liked tainted love to go back and listen to the magic of soft sell. They are really an important post-punk group, an uncompromising group. Um, it's really important to mention that Mark Almond was a figure of fun in 1982, as this on-display homosexual, really, that was never able to really break out of a, a perception of being gay. Here he is wearing, you know, sort of a, a bandana wrapped around his head, an eyeliner, and couldn't be more sibilant, couldn't be more camp, couldn't be more gay, really, if he tried. But try being gay in 1982 in England. See where it gets you. I think Mark Almond is probably one of the bravest performers of the early 1980s. I remember as a child when I went to boarding school that I, as I still do, uh, post pictures of my favorite groups on the wall and I was posting a picture of Soft Cell on close to my bathroom mirror at boarding school and a teacher I had a lot of respect for, somebody who I thought was really liberal and really forward thinking, said to me, what do you think of those guys, Soft Cell? I said, well, you know, I really like them, you know, and she said, well, to me, it's blatant homosexuality. Soft Cell posed a threat to everything that sort of that kind of 50s sensibility of what sexuality is and this whole black and white man and woman sensibility. Mark Almond was unapologetic for the first time. If I think of Bronsky Beat and I think of other gay groups, there's almost an apologetic tone to the gay groups of the 1980s. Oh, feel sorry for me because I'm gay and I'm getting bullied. Feel sorry for me. Not Mark Almond. Don't feel sorry for me. I've got this. This is who I am. Mark Almond would talk about brushing away flies from his eyes, as in this album. He paints a not-so-pretty picture. He speaks as the way people do now, but in his time, there was nobody like him. In 1982, Soft Cell were one of the most successful singles groups in the UK, scoring a three with Say Hello, Wave Goodbye, scoring a two with Torch, scoring another three with what? Nothing to sniff at. Three top three records, followed by two other top tens. That gives Soft Cell five top ten records. So the art of falling apart is also so brave. Here you are on the second album talking about falling apart. I think that this is magnificent. David Ball has to be mentioned here as somebody that was prepared to be on the front line with this charismatic wild card, this loose cannon that Mark Almond was. A lot of Soft Cell's restriction in being more successful was I don't feel as though boys could really get onto the Soft, soft Cell bandwagon and say, hey, I'm a Soft Cell fan without getting the shit kicked out of them. Soft Cell were not a group that it was cool for boys to like. No one's going to stand up and say, hey, I like Soft Cell at 11 years old. You're going to get a black eye. You're going to get bullied. So who we have to thank for Soft Cell has got to be those chicks that went for the alternative kind of guy that dug the guy with the eyeliner. Um, and Mark Almond's relationship with Cindy Ecstasy on record is really important. His dynamic with her was sexy and provocative. On the cover of the album, which is produced by Mike Fawn and Soft Cell, are the band wearing sort of these plastic masks, which are kind of sort of melting on their face. And on the ground beneath them is this sort of gothic wear. They're not giving you straight up pop. They are really pushing the envelope. Mark Elman's getting really comfortable with this 
uh, being a bearer of torch songs. He's getting really comfortable with his ability to sing these big Shirley Bassey style cabaret numbers as a man. That took tremendous courage. The singles on the album are Where the Heart Is, which reached number 21. Numbers and Barriers, which was a double A side released in the March of 1983. Where the Heart Is talks about, it's almost the uh, polar opposite to Our House by Madness. You know, Father looks at you like a snake. You play with the food upon your plate. This whole dynamic of being a gay child at a straight couple's table, that feeling of awkwardness, that feeling of not belonging, that feeling of almost being an alien, which if you are, if you can empathize with the situation of being a strange child in a straight household, the lyrics here are way ahead of their time. You are getting testimonial of your own life in a way that no other pop artist is capable of, of achieving at this time. So Where the Heart Is is a really important single. Um, but I don't think it was the right choice. What should have happened is that Loving You, Hating Me, which had been released as a B-site, should have been given its chance to shine. It would have made a fourth top 10 for Soft Cell in 1982. There's no doubt that if Loving You, Hating Me had been released as a single, that it really, it would have definitely worked. We could have done without the Pinkies' Danger Games. We could have maybe pushed Flock of Seagulls down a couple of places to give Loving You, Hating Me a chance to shine. Um, Loving You, Hating Me is, is just such a heart-rending, brilliant song. And it's the other side of love. It's the side that you don't want to see. There's no fluffy bunny here. There's no dressing it up. There's just this ugliness to soft sell, which I really appreciate. Um, Forever the Same is um, this big number. Um, Baby Doll is hilarious. Blatant homosexual, yeah. Mark Alman goes, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, ah, so brave, so not what else is happening, thinking of a dollar as you, you know, just this seedy underworld, giving, where was Mark Allen? This is a person I want to sit down with, with a good couple of strong cocktails, and I want to talk about 1982. I want to know where he went, what he did, who he met. This to me is a truly fascinating pop star because he was able to bring this kind of tawdriness and this dirty underbelly to the top 10. I don't know how on earth he did it. Well, let's look at that. The Sun Bizarre label is run by Steve-O, this charismatic big character. The Sun Bizarre label went through Mercury Records, which gave Soft Cell that kind of wide appeal that they were able to enjoy. It's also important to mention that Mark Dean was tied up in Soft Cell's business affairs, which, which, if you speak to George Michael, not good news. Mark Dean was also the person that ran Innovision Records and also ran Wham's finances into the ground and took them for every penny they had. But Mark Dean was part of Soft Cell and Wham. Uh, when we look at numbers, numbers talks about a promiscuous guy. You're looking so thin these days. Are you doing speed? That's the lyric to the song here. Body one, body two, body three, body four. Throw them away like Kleenex. The disposable nature of a, of a gay lifestyle. Not being heard by anyone really apart from closet homosexuals and the girls that were supporting Soft Cell. But the message here was so important. This is at the junction of AIDS and HIV, this album. Body one, body two, body three, body four. There's this disease which is ravaging before it's ever recognized by government. Here it is, his testament to what's happening on the gay scene. The bitchy kind of lyrics that go with this. On the flip side, you have Barriers, which talks about 
it's just this heartfelt ballad. It's very slow and kind of preponderous. There's an oboe going, very sort of art theater, dramatic, um, which works so well. Loving You, Hating Me and Heat were both released in the US as singles. Heat, which we are experiencing right now here in the studio, is an amazing song. Um, you know, the cig she's letting the cigarette burn down to her fingers. You know, she's holding it, she's asleep. She's so out of it that the cigarette is burning down into her fingers. This is important stuff. We are seeing people live this and do this. But in 82, when we're kids, to, to have that actually put into a song, talking about how messed up people get, how screwed up they are, the decisions that they make, and actually putting that onto vinyl and into record and actually calling people out on their antisocial, nasty behavior as soft cell do, I think, again, requires tremendous bravery. It's a mugs game. It's hilarious, you know. Um, it reminds me again, if I think of the killers when you're hailing a cab and da 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 da, they've taken it from soft cell. And she's in the da 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 da. You know, it's a mugs game. She's got chewing gum stuck in her hair because he's, you know, she's kissing him and the chewing gum in her mouth gets stuck in his hair and they're on the back seat of a car and he's worried about getting her pregnant. I mean, these lyrics really, he's pushing the envelope so hard here. And, and I think it was pushed so hard that people couldn't quite believe it. I sat here with a sense of surreal amazement that this got through the channels. I, I don't know how Soft Cell made it through to mainstream, but I think But by the time the second album had come around and they called it the art of falling apart, there's nothing pop about that. There is That is alternative, that is brave, that is post-punk at its best. And then we have another song called Martin, which happens to be my father's name and Sad to relate, uh, this song could well be written about my father. There's also apparently a cat running rampant in the Gallagher household currently, which definitely meets the spirit of this amazing song. Martin's an incredible song. It's a sad song and it's frenetic and, and talks about somebody that's obviously experiencing mental problems. Forever the same, we've talked about. And then we, of course, we have to mention there's kitchen sink drama. And this is... I, I can just see him. I can just see him prancing around. All of this stuff that Soft Cell do, people take it, they dilute it, they apologize for it. Not Mark Allen. Kitchen Sink Drama Room, it, it's a Broadway song. You know, it's, it's hilarious. I just can't get enough of this album. I, I think that Soft Cell are one of the most underrated groups of the 80s. I think that their bravery is to be commended. Anyone that likes Tainted Love, treat yourself in this day and age and give the music of Soft Cell a chance to really, to really reach you and, 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 and admire their bravery. The last uh, track to mention um, on the album is the Hendrix um, medley where they take Hey Joe and uh, Purple Haze and Soft Cell do it and you would think that's probably just about the worst idea I've ever heard. It works and do you know why it works? Because whatever Mark Alman takes as his own, he makes his own. There's no arguing with Mark Allman's possession of the song. He possesses the song. And you want to know how these marks are made? Do you want to know how I struggle to come up with the number that is fair to reflect the work that I listen to and hear? Is that when I hear originality and when I hear somebody that is not kind of finding themselves on record, that's lovely that you're finding yourself on record on my dime. That's wonderful. What am I, a therapist? I am not here to watch. I'm not that necessarily that interested in watching you grow. If you haven't got it developed, why is that my problem? There are people that expect me to be a lot more lenient with stuff that's just schlocky and says nothing. You're asking me to compare 
Soft sell on Tom Petty. I'm sorry Tom Petty doesn't exist in my universe. This record speaks to subjects that matter, speaks to subjects that were not addressed, gave a voice to people that were unheard. Everyone hears what Tom Petty and his loyal audience has to say. Very few people hear what Soft Cell and the Art of Falling Apart has to say. And for that reason, I will be awarding the album 95%. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, recommend it to friends, post comments. Also, if you have an album that you'd like to hear reviewed, we welcome your requests.